Hello and welcome to Zero Code. In this video, we are going to talk about the last principle of solid, which is called dependency inversion principle. Now, dependency inversion, dependency injection, inversion control—all these terms mean different things. The principle of dependency inversion versus the application of dependency inversion again are two completely different things. If you are confused by all of this, I have attached the book uh, in which the chapter on dependency inversion actually explains all these concepts. But in this video, I will just try to focus on the scope of what dependency inversion principle means and how you can actually spot out by in the design of your application if this principle is being followed or not. How you can spot out if this is being violated and how you can write code and design classes in a way so that this principle is followed if you want to know in detail about uh, dependency injection principle of dependency inversion inversion of control etc do let me know i will try to address it in a separate video but in this video we will just try to focus on the dependency inversion principle <laughs> Okay, I will try to spell out the actual definition of this principle and then I will try to break it down using an example. The principle itself says high level modules should not depend on low level modules, both should depend on abstractions. Abstraction should not depend on implementation, implementation should depend on abstraction. Okay, this does not make sense in the first read or second read or third read. Let me try to break it in simpler English. Basically, this principle says that high level modules or low level modules in your programs or in your code base should not depend on the actual implementation or the concrete classes they should depend on abstractions how do we define or how do we implement abstractions using interfaces so basically different client classes or different uh, caller classes should not know about the internal implementation of classes instead they should depend on interfaces again understanding this using an example would make more sense Let's look at this very simple class diagram where class A depends on class B and class B depends on class C. Now, looking at this, it doesn't seem like there is a problem. But where does the problem occur? First, class A somehow knows about the implementation of class B and hence class A is dependent on class B. Similarly, class B is dependent on class C. If something in class C changes, it has to impact class b and if something in class b changes it will impact class a so this is one problem second problem is when you're trying to write unit test for these classes now if you want to write unit test for class a since it depends on class b you have to somehow mock the dependency of class b and since class b depends on class c again you have to somehow mock the dependency on class c so this actually creates a dependency control from a to b to c this kind of code is difficult to manage, it is difficult to change and it is difficult to test. So that we can test this kind of code easily and so that we can extend and make changes to such kind of code base easily, we come up with dependency inversion principle, basically where you try to invert the dependencies. Now, where does this word invert comes from? It comes from the change of the direction of arrow once we apply this principle. Let's see how. Now, instead of class A, depending on class B, let's say we introduce an interface which exposes the functions that class B implements. Now class A depends on that interface and class B, actual class B depends on that interface. So the arrow that was going from A to B is now has inverted from class B to interface B. Similarly, we define interface C which exposes functions that are implemented by class C and class C now depends on that interface and interface B depends on interface C. Now, what happens, you can change the implementation of these functions in class B or C without changing the interfaces. Also, when someone is writing unit test, it is very easy for them to mock these dependencies because the signature of these functions are not changing. They are just exposed by the interface and it is easy to mock those interfaces. This is what dependency inversion principle is all about. Now, let's try to see a concrete example for this. In one of the previous examples, we saw that there are different interfaces for storing the data into different types of databases, say cache or database. Now, let's say that we have a cache and we have not implemented the functions of that cache using an interface. We have just directly exposed the functions of cache class uh, as add key, delete key and evict key. 
now the outer module or the outer level module which is calling these functions add key or delete key or evict key actually knows about the implementation of these functions if anything changes in these functions suppose i have to change the signature of add key now the function or the modules whoever are calling these add key method have to go and change the implementation because i have increased or decreased the number of parameters instead of that if let's say i would have used an interface which i called cache interface which has just exposed three functions add delete and evict and it has accepted some parameters and internally those uh functions are actually implementing are implemented by actual uh, cache class uh using these functions add key delete key and evict key now what is the benefit of this let's say that tomorrow i am actually replacing the technology of cache i was using redis now i am going to use memcache or i was using memcache now i am going to use redis or i am going to use some third uh, kind of uh, caching solution for my application what advantage you would have is that your cache interface can still keep exposing these basic functions of add key delete key and evict key and your internal implementation of these uh, different caching solutions can change so the outer level modules actually do not have a dependency that dependency is removed or basically inverted by this introduction of this interface here so if because of the technology change the internal implementation is changing the only dependency exists between that class and that interface there might be a change in the implementation of functions but that interface doesn't changes and hence it allows the upper level modules or the outer level modules to function independently there are no changes there are no impact on those modules even the unit test won't have to be updated this is a very simple example of dependency inversion principle but i hope you get the idea that how using interfaces and by separating this dependency of implementation from the outer module actually helps in catering to future changes of the system and also catering to not breaking the existing functionality one last point that i want to highlight here is since we have discussed all the solid principles now using these abstractions using these principles actually ensure that your code is modular and allow you and a big team of developers to make changes to the same source code one without breaking the existing functionality and second by allowing the changes i hope this principle was clear to you i hope all the solid principles are clear to you if you have any doubts or if you have any more examples of reference for any of these principles please feel free to share them in comments so that others can also learn from you from the next video onwards we are going to dig deep into design patterns till then take care see you in the next video